Hello, so last episode we had a little look at um, Nebula OS package and installing a Debian file onto a, a EC2 instance. Um, that was all done manually um, and today I want to go over a little bit about um, you know, automating that entire process. Um, I should uh, segue into um, Netflix Aminator because that is the uh, package that that's the project that uh, Netflix created to help with creating AMIs to um, essentially um, have a Debian image and pre-break it into a into a foundation AMI and have that actual AMI as part of your whole release process um, and they created Aminator to help them do that but if you actually have a look at the Aminator release uh, GitHub page the last release was actually August the 11th 2016 two years ago now, I'm kind of inclined to think that Aminator is just not maintained anymore. Um, perhaps Netflix have moved on to something else. Uh, as far as I can tell, um, I, I, I can't, like, their Google group is pretty much dead. Their wiki hasn't been updated in several years. Um, and their actual, their, their readme their usage here. None of this is actually relevant to the latest release. Pretty much all of these tags now are, are just not relevant anymore. They just don't exist. Um, so I got a feeling that it's just not it's just not used anymore. Um, made in 2013. 2013 is is so long ago now, especially in kind of Netflix timeline. 2013 is like old old legacy kind of time. Um, um, but yeah, I, I just don't think this is, is used anymore. It's actually a pain in the ass to use as well. Um, it works well with uh, para virtual images and Amazon is actually pushing people towards HVM images. And if you want to use para virtual images, at least in the US one, you're going to have to use like M3s, M4s. Um, you can't actually use a, um, you can't actually put a PV image onto a, a T2 micro on a free tier. Um, and Aminator support for HVM images is very, very limited. Um, so um, I'm inclined to think that this whole project is kind of dead and just not used anymore. I might be completely wrong in that, but um, I am gonna I am gonna segue. I know this this I, I've got a plan of just using like Netflix tech to do all this, but for creating uh, AMIs, I'm I'm going to use Packer um, because it's pretty awesome and HashiCorp are absolutely killing it and. Using Packer compared to using Aminator is it's like night and day. Um, Aminator, you need an actual EC2 instance. You need to install Aminator onto that EC2 instance. You need to give that EC2 instance a profile that allows it to um, work with EC2 resources. Um, and it's, it's it's not particularly nice to use. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into the whole Aminator thing. Um, I'm instead going to use this episode to just... Uh, a little bit about Packer um, and creating a, an AMI image for our Webflux app um, using Packer basically. Um, so if we have a, a look at a, our little Webflux app, uh, if we go into the build gradle, you'll see that what I've got here is this uh, requires Java 8 runtime headless. Basically when we're creating the Debian image um, part of that image is to uh, ensure that Java 8 is actually installed. Um, and the reason we do that, obviously, is because the actual service is written in Java and needs Java to actually run. Um, but installing Java actually takes you know, a couple of minutes, um, like uh, one or two minutes. And uh, it's not required every time we actually uh, create an AMI. It's something that can be built into a foundation image for us. So I want to kind of cut down on those two minutes, that extra two minutes that we don't need to actually waste uh, installing Java 8. So what I actually want to do is create a base image with Java 8 so I don't have to have that as part of this Debian. And I've already done that. And I've done that in this little project here, AWS Java 8 AMI. Um, I've put it onto GitHub, I'll put the link in, in, in the description. Um, but if you just, just have a look at this little packer.json, um, basically, um, I'm using this foundation, uh, this base image, which is Ubuntu 16.04 HVM. Um, regions EU West 1, 
um, instance type two, T2 micro is just going to be a small instance basically. Uh, to provision it, basically I'm going to use a shell provision. I can use Ansible Chef, whatever you, whatever you use, but for this I just did a simple shell provisioning, which is basically to uh, install Java 8 and you know, create an AMI out of that. So that AMI that I created, which is in my uh, uh, actual account, um, AMIs, here we go. This AMI ID here, I'm going to use that as a foundation image for, for actually, um, for our Webflux app. So if I go back into the Webflux app, our little app here, I've got a packer.json there. Packer.json. And basically what I want to do with this is use that foundation image, that AMI, uh, that's the AMI number for our Java 8 Ubuntu 16.04 foundation image. And what I want to do is when we create our Debian, I want to use Packer Provisioner to actually put that um, Debian onto our onto our uh, uh, onto our foundation image and install it. And from that, we're going to create another image. That's going to be the Webflux app image. So it essentially guarantees immutability, pretty much. Um, yeah, so here's our, my provisioners. File provisioner, just basically upload the source Debian file uh, created by Gradle and then just install it. Um, and there we go. Um, I've also uh, I've also added something to the script within the build uh, Gradle. Post install. I've added an extra line to the post install for it. The system control enable uh, our Webflux app service. This essentially this essentially means that whenever we boot, whenever we boot the image, the service is going to be up and running straight away. We don't have to manually SSH in and start it or whatever. It's just going to be there, ready for us to, to, to work with. Okay, so uh, if I just do a, a Gradle again, Gradle clean build, create deb. Easy. So if I go into scripts no not scripts build build distributions webflux app that's where our debian's been created on the build i'm just going to copy that now and now we're going to create a brand new ami uh, with this actual app installed so i do a packer uh, build oh actually first i need to supply a, a variable the actual the, the source of the debian um, I just go back into packer.json. That's this source dev file here. Part of this provision uh, use that source dev file that I have to actually put in as a variable on the command line. So that source dev file is going to be packer build minus var uh, source dev file is equal to what I just copied and pasted. And I think it needs to be a relative path. I'm just going to put the dot slash in there. And then packer build minus var source dev file equals that, and then packer.json. And that is going to create our our brand new AMI just for this service. So we're going to have essentially one AMI for this service. Um, uh, the AMI, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna put multiple services onto this AMI, or uh, we're just gonna basically, yeah. We're just going to have an AMI for this service rather than have like an, an instance that already exists in the cloud and we deploy new services onto it onto it and remove services from them. We just basically bake the actual service into the AMI itself and the AMI becomes part of the release process, essentially. That's what I'm heading towards anyway. Um, you could do it with Docker, of course. Um, this is kind of like an alternative to that, or Kubernetes. Um, I like doing it this way because it's really simple and you don't have the additional overhead of of actually maintaining Docker containers because Docker containers, you need to version them as, as well. And actually, if you've ever tried using uh, the Docker private repository or Docker Hub, that's just an extra overhead, which is a pain in the ass, even though I really like using Docker. Um, but just for releasing services, it just this way is just easier, in my opinion, anyway. Maybe people will disagree. But I, I like having just basically one VM per service rather than having like a big VM with, with multiple services on them. Um, having a big 
big VM with multiple services on them kind of lends itself to mutating rather than being immutable. Um, at least where I work right now, it's kind of that's kind of how it is. We have big VMs, multiple services deployed into them, and what we tend to do is mutate those VMs rather than create brand new from scratch. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of why I like doing it this way, actually. Guarantees immutability. So, uh, wait for AMI to become ready. Uh, it's probably still got a couple of minutes. I'm probably gonna have to fast forward this whole video. Um, it does take a couple of minutes, I guess. Um, but at least when it's uh, when it's done, I'll be ready to just deploy. Of course, you'd probably have you know you're not gonna just uh, you're not gonna just do this on a command line yourself. You're gonna have Jenkins kind of handle this for you or whatever build provisioner you actually use. Um, Jenkins, uh, Concourse, GoCD. I never use GoCD myself. Apparently, it's good though. Kids are about to burst through the door now, I bet. Here we go. Hey, buddy. Hey. You're just doing a. Oh, you got a sticker on? Yeah. What's that? A no yeah. fear sticker? Oh, nice yeah. one. James, give me it. That's super cool. James, give me it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing a video at the moment, buddy. <laughs> all right, I'll be done in a second, all right? I'll be done in a second, all right? I'll be done in a second. Wait, right, kids. Right, kids. <laughs> what is that? Right, kids. 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 Can you come downstairs with daddy? Just for a couple of minutes until I do my video, okay? Yeah, just take the piggy down, take the piggy down, and I'll put batteries in that after, okay? Where should I put it? Um, put it in your room, bud. Four. Andy? Go downstairs, I'll be downstairs in a bit, okay? A couple more, couple more minutes and I'll be downstairs, alright? Good kids. Okay. I'll be down in a minute, okay? Okay, AMI built. Sorry about that. Okay, what are we gonna do? Now we're gonna just deploy the AMI. Uh, if I refresh this, hopefully our AMI will be uh, right there for us. Uh, here we go, Webflux app version 0.0.1. I need to give them actual names on that. They always forget to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, oh, make sure we got a snapshot as well. We obviously got a snapshot. Yeah, new snapshot created. Um, we are going to launch a brand new instance with one of my AMIs, the Webflux app AMI that I just made. Select that. Uh, let's configure instance. I'm going to put it on the sub uh, uh, external subnet so I can actually reach it. I don't have a VPN set up. Right now. Storage, 8 gigabytes, fine, tags. No, I don't care about tags for now. Uh, we're going to add a rule to... Uh, open up port 8091 and the reason 8091 is is because that's essentially what the app is listening on um, if we go to you know by source main resources application.properties server port 8091 it's going to be listening on that port so we need to open that port up otherwise we won't be able to reach it uh, okay uh, 8091 review and launch uh, let's launch that Eventually, I'll get into actually automating this process as well of, of putting up, uh, actually launching instances. But for now, I just wanted to go over um, AMI creation, automating that. Um, I will eventually go over Terraform, even though it's not Netflix OSS. Um, it is awesome as well. HashiCorp's amazing. Um, but yeah, eventually, I'm going to go into Spinnaker essentially and have Spinnaker kind of deploy our AMIs. Um, Spinnaker is pretty awesome too. Okay, wait for that to come up. Any minute now, there we go, running. Uh, that's our public IP. 
So let's copy that, put it in here. Port 1891, and our path is just hello. It's better work now. There we go. Hello world. Okay. So what we've done, essentially, just a quick repat, we've uh, essentially built an AMI with a service pre-baked into it. Rather than having uh, rather than having a server which we're going to put a, a, a service onto um, that we just essentially continually mutate, we essentially have the AMI part of the release process. So we're pre-baking an AMI, um, which guarantees immutability. And for that reason, at least for this little for this little small example, we don't need Docker at all because we've already containerized it. Okay.